the latest draft of the infrastructure bill includes raising $30 billion a year uh, from cracking down on crypto tax evasion. Oh, it's certainly going up a lot. Some of those legacy guys, you know, like the so-called guys, like the, the old world, they don't really understand the buzz that's needed in order to get these customers. You talked about the Gen Z and, and the young millennials. The regulators are turning a lot more muscular in terms of how they're thinking about yep. the crypto community. Now, the Blockchain Association saying these rules pose a, quote, imminent threat to the budding crypto industry here in America. They say the rules could hit crypto miners and maybe even investors. Not just like having the solution is not enough. For those products and simultaneously, a lot of regulators, frankly, are currently going through the process of trying to figure out what their regulatory regime for crypto derivatives is going to be. You know, some of them have uh, regular derivatives regimes, some of them have crypto regimes. Many of them don't, uh, you know, haven't clarified how those combine together. The industry also arguing that tax evasion is not widespread and a crackdown won't raise the expected revenue. But IRS Chief Charles Reddick saying in April that cryptocurrencies are one reason that uncollected taxes now total up to $1 trillion. Yeah, and it leads us right into what Jamie Dimon has said about the threat of fintech, Dan, uh, to legacy banks. Um, it's something that we expect to see a lot more work on over the next you know, three to five years. Um, and you know, we want to be a piece of that, working with regulators to build out those regimes. You know, and then there are some jurisdictions where there do exist some frameworks that we are, are, are looking at uh, for them. You know, we think it could be a lot lower. Others on the other side think it could be a lot higher. So we, $28 billion is just kind of a guess. You still yep. quote Tether on FTX. Uh, this despite an uh, ongoing lack of transparency and uh, a lack of full disclosure, which is what the investment community really wants to see out of them. Uh, what gives you confidence to continue quoting or providing quotes in Tether when there is so much scrutiny on this cryptocurrency right now? Because they are going to become a full-fledged bank offering different services. So on the one hand, you're lending and, and the interest rates are higher, but on the other hand, you're all, you, know, you also have deposits with higher interest rates. So I feel like it balances itself, uh, it balances itself out, and I, I feel like that having that you know, you know, multitude of offerings is going to make it very de-risked risk when it comes to, you know, interest rates. So, you know, Afterpay on its own has a lot of credit or more credit risk than, than other companies, but together with Square, with all the other solutions. And remember, the closed loop system, basically, you know, the, the rivalry to the incumbent networks, that's the holy grail. And that's what Square is going after, the sellers on the one hand, the merchants and the users. So it's, it's more than just one single product. It's the complete set of products that makes it so attractive and not as risky as people think.